everybody. Um, very pleased to be here. Um, I'm learning a lot and um, I'm becoming a bit uncertain about what I know <laughs> as I'm learning. Um, so yeah, I live at King's. I'm um, a co-director of the Center for Language, Discourse and Communication there. Please come and see us. Um, we live in much more humble surroundings than this one, but uh, we're very friendly and hospitable. Uh, so uh, what I'd like to do in this short talk, okay, small stories, short talk, uh, is to just pick up on an emerging discussion within uh, interactional sociolinguistics, uh, especially in the area of language and digital media, about the value of thick, uh, deep, uh, small data is an alternative to big data, but maybe also about the possibilities of synergizing with big data. Now, crudely speaking, big data in these discussions often stand as a proxy for corpus-based analysis, and small data uh, often refer to contextualized approaches to language and identities, the sort of approaches that would start with a critique of Laboff that uh, Jacob uh, mentioned, uh, Laboff would be seen as a first wave person and uh, we'd say we're in fourth wave approaches to language and identities. That means quite a lot of things that I don't have time to explain here, but one of the things that it means is that when you try to establish links between uh, micro uh, linguistic variables and macro uh, categories, you need mediating uh, links, uh, mediating concepts, meso-level concepts as we call them. Uh, for instance, things like norms and genres and local context uh, affordances and all that. Um, well, there are no thick and fast um, dis answers in yet in these discussions, but perhaps a tendency toward a di dichotomous thinking between small and big and at least in my neck of woods, a bit of a backlash even against big data work that pushes uh, uh, small data work toward more critical stances on it. Okay, the truth is a lot of us are very intimidated by uh, numbers and very dysmetric. And I think by now as well, a lot of colleagues uh, have become kind of defensive, offensive about the fact that uh, in grant applications, they need to have a big data element if they stand a, a chance that is more than 2% of getting funding. So uh, I feel I need to put this out there as well. I also need to put out there that I think I've become part of these discussions kind of unwittingly uh, through my work on, on small stories. Uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was selected in this, uh, really, I recommend this, uh, this handbook, actually, the Sage Handbook of Social Media Research Methods. It was just the editors thought that it would make a good fit in the section of qualitative approaches and as an example of small data research. Uh, and um, I, I don't particularly like dichotomy, so polarization myself, uh, and I'm not a monomethod scholar either. Um, but I do think that before we discuss proper synergies, which is part of what brings us all together in these two days, between small and big data approaches, and before we perhaps move hastily to a consensus, we, we need to uh, unpack and reflect on some key differences between small and big data approaches, which, which is what we've been uh, doing since yesterday. Uh, one of the things I've been arguing for is actually less emphasis on the actual size of the data in these discussions, more interrogation of what constitutes data in the first place and how we can achieve thick, nuanced, rich descriptions, if that's what we want to do. Um, so in this, a short talk, I want to flesh out, what, what I can flesh out is a different matter in, in 10 minutes, but I want to flesh this out a bit more in relation to small stories for the analysis of uh, social media communication. So how are data defined and viewed in small stories? What implications does this have for the kinds of questions we can ask? We can ask some questions in every research and not others and the kinds of analysis we can carry out if we want to answer these questions and not others, right? So this will allow us, I hope, to see some challenges for any attempts to synergize with big data. And I know my title promises opportunities 
opportunities too, and um, I'll probably have one minute to talk about them. Uh, so I hope opportunities can wait till our breakout uh, sessions. Uh, but small stories very much started as the study of the everyday, the mundane stories that uh, young women that I uh, researched ethnographically in uh, walking the streets of this small Greek town were telling with one another uh, over a cup of coffee. So the focus on, on, on local context, interaction, and actually meaning making as a joint uh, uh, achievement of people negotiating uh, has been well recognized and written about in small stories and it's informing uh, interview research or narratives at the moment. Now small uh, in, in my initial work uh, was a metaphor for the fragmentation, the contingency, the fleetingness of how we make sense of our lives. So the analytical apparatus of small stories are uh, brings into attention contradictions, inconsistencies, uh, when we have not worked something out fully, who we want to be. Uh, there's similarly attention to the moment, what we communicate in the moment, moment by moment, the agency that this may reveal, the potential for transformation that it may have. And this has lent itself well to an uptake of small stories as a critical narrative approach and an outlook, an epistemological outlook on the researcher when studying people's autobiographical genres. So small stories enable the study of the overlooked, the marginalized, silenced voices. And in that respect, uh, they have had an uptake outside of microanalytical sociolinguistic studies in a number of areas from clinical psychology to educational inquiry, which is very not nice and unexpected. Now, in my current ESC project, I've been studying the uh, proliferation of activities that fitted my initial definition of small stories on social media, particularly setting out to explore um, uh, relations between media affordances and communication practices for uh, the built-in design logic of uh, sharing the moment, which we can find in many social networking sites, Facebook included. Uh, so I'm especially interested in the distribution, multi-semioticity and multi-participation of stories for sharing the moment on, on social media. And stories have been uh, at the heart of the design of media apps. They're a recent flagship feature, many of them, you know, Instagram and Snapchat as well. So I've been arguing that attention to stories is necessary if we want to scrutinize what kinds of subjects, political, ethical and emotive, media apps seek to engineer and how users in turn take up, harness or indeed counteract uh, these, um, uh, these uh, uh, offerings. Um, so um, methodologically, uh, small stories uh, present uh, a lot of the uh, hallmarks of, uh, of, of slow research and uh, a lot of affinities. Actually, I'm realizing this is a, an older version of, uh, of my uh, presentation and not the one I said yesterday, um, don't worry. Um, uh, with social interaction, there, there were quite a few references here that I'd like you to have in case, but I suppose it could, could be uh, made available, oh, yes. the, the recent version, the most recent version, uh, and ethnographic perspectives and communication, which I cannot present in detail here. Uh, but this has implications for what data are. And this takes me back to my point about data often being naturalized in big, small data discussions. So leaving aside questions of size or modes of analysis, there are four, let us say, uh, premises that begin to create some misalignments maybe between small stories and certain uh, analytics, uh, including corpus analysis. Mm. Uh, so there's an element of uh, serendipity in research, which means that often Often I know it doesn't sound very good, you know, to say to PhD students that often there are no initial hypotheses or firmed up research questions. That kind of inductive work is actually described by conversation analysts as unmotivated looking. So data are also recognized as moving improvisational assemblages uh, comprising heterogeneous elements in them that do not necessarily enter correlational or causal relations. We see that with multimodal uh, data online. Um, so agency is recognized, so um, uh, data do things. The same data can be looked at as text, 
uh, figures, numbers, or as people, um, and uh, and I've written uh, about the kind of the ethics, the ethical implications. Uh, of, uh, of uh, what it means to look at data as text and communicative resources only, as opposed to data uh, as being associated with people, with real people, with real lives. And now the need for velocity and partly dictated by the constant changes that social media apps um, um, make need to be balanced with slowness and real-time tracking methods. And this slowness often involves looking at the online as embodied engagements of, of people in the here and now through ethnographic work. Uh, and so value in the data is intimately linked uh, with research ethics, as I've mentioned, a person's experience and subjectivities as opposed to necessarily the place of something uh, in a data set. Um, how am I doing for time? Because I may need to, uh, um, yeah, so I'm skipping the previous uh, slide, which was about how you can maybe have uh, qualitative with quantitative analysis, or at least how I have had them in a bit of a mutually feeding relationship uh, so far. And I'm interested in finding out how I can uh, take this further. Uh, but uh, let me, so on the basis of what I have uh, shown is uh, <laughs> an overstatement so far, we can identify four more or less uh, key uh, differences between small stories and, and, and uh, many big data analytics, which I have uh, uh, no time to, uh, to unpack. But what, what I want to say is that on the basis of these differences, small stories, when they become data, uh, they still are multi-semiotic, contextually emergent data with the recognition that what is included in them is not in a one-to-one -one association with any uh, specific sociocultural reality or, or, or the or specific identities of the people who produce them. So from the mediatization of the Eurozone crisis to Yanis Varoufakis, former minister of finance in Greece, becoming a showbiz expert to selfies of young women on Facebook and then in Instagram, uh, in my work on small stories in social media, I have been able to examine how dense referencing, for instance, and transmedia links going beyond online are of paramount importance for people's self-presentation. Also, I've shown how specific modes of participation by specific users can be very effective in scaling up and making uh, more available specific versions of a story. So this kind of work on some level resists aggregation of the data and it also requires going beyond lexical choices in order to find out links between uh, stories and, uh, and identities. So uh, on a kind of a let's say more positive, synergetic note. I think at the moment, and having been here for a day, I think it's easier for me to see how small stories could be used perhaps to qualitize, right, big data. Um, uh, or how big data could be used to scale up from small stories insights. Um, there's a precedent for that. Uh, corpus assisted discourse analysis is becoming more and more um, um, prevalent in, uh, you know, in the constituency I speak with. So maybe, you know, small stories assisted big data uh, or big data assisted small stories. Um, th there's a precedent for one, not for the other. Uh, what is less clear to me, and maybe we can pick this up in our discussion, I say, because this applies probably to others, is um, the, the extent to which we, 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 we can talk about uh, synergies and interdisciplinarities as I understand them, and the, the way I understand them is that two or more things are brought together in ways that really allow each to rethink their boundaries and then something new emerges. So synergy as a critical alliance of equal partners. And that's what I'm struggling with uh, at the moment, but very interested to hear more. Thank you very much.